I don't even know how to explain it, but uh, it's one of those stories that it just happened. You know, like someone had been arrested. It was all over the news that he'd been arrested. He was uh, awaiting a trial. And then, punde si punde, the guy is missing in action. He's not there. Where is he? We don't know. I want to welcome all the listeners, and we're going to get started here with uh, with DJ Omoshfire. DJ Omoshfire, maybe just give us, you know, like a, a brief background of um, what had happened, you know, like uh, before this, before this guy left the U.S., and why, you know, like uh, the Kenyan security services were trying to arrest him for extradition. DJ Omoshfire, Karibu Sana. Um, so... Basically, what ended up happening was uh, this guy was involved in a relationship uh, and uh, per her, the family of his uh, ex-lover, um, they basically were breaking up. So she was reported missing from, uh, I guess, from home because she didn't return from work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess within a day or maybe 24 hours of her being reported missing, her car was found at the airport with her basically... Uh, in uh, I guess she was she had passed away and there was foul play uh, and he was uh, immediately suspected to be the uh, the person who basically took her life uh, now when they started going back and uh, looking further into it they found that um, the guy had uh, basically purchased his ticket uh, the same day or within hours of her passing away uh, one way ticket to Kenya and he basically disappeared. He bailed that, out. Yeah, that was in November. That was in November last that was, year. That was in November last year. So fairly recent. Yeah, fairly recent. And then he was basically found uh, in Kenya. Because Kenya and the U.S. have an extradition treaty. And so he was found uh, in Kenya, uh, hanging out, uh, I guess, uh, one mic probably just left uh, the bunnies. Those guys who went to Kenya. In, uh, okay. So, Makes sense. Oh, so, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so uh, as Madogo Daniels was at the airport, this chap was where? Hanging. Where, with while they were to, uh, now it's in January. So, so he was picked so, up. So he was picked up in January. He was picked up in January. By Kenya yes. police. And that, Kenya that was police. in Westlands. Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, so, but apparently they had been going to like his, uh, where he comes from, the village, and he had not been sighted, you know. So, you know, it's, it's just due diligence. And it seems somebody probably either uh, ratted him out or whatever, so they picked him up. And uh, part of uh, now the extradition, the way the extradition works is that before you're extradited, you still have to go through like a court of law in Kenya to see whether the extradition charges should stand so that you can be extradited. Okay, so I think that's interesting because uh, I, the confusing part that some people were asking was if this guy had been arrested, why had why had it, had he not been extradited? So what you're saying is that even with the treaty, there still has to be a court process. Correct. For someone to, for a judge to give an order that yes, yes. this is a legit case. Yes. We can extradite him. Yes. We can send him back to the yes. U.S. And uh, and also part of it as well is uh, in some cases, depending on what the offense is, uh, and what type of agreements that they have for this extradition stuff, that person can be tried uh, with at the, in their home country and sentenced within their home country for that crime that was committed uh, in another country. In another country. Yes. Okay, that's 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 quite interesting. I mean, we typically we've had of a number of cases where Kenyans have been picked up in Kenya and been brought back to trial in the U.S. Uh, I'm not sure whether there's any instances where like uh, someone has committed a crime in Kenya, uh, escaped and came to the U.S. and then the U.S. government brought him back uh, to Kenya. I'm not sure about that, but I'm going to give uh, Uno Mike uh, a chance to say hello to the people, and maybe he can talk to us a little bit more about that uh, extradition treaty that Kenya has with the U.S. Uh, I mean, he had quite a bit to say about <coughs> it. He's done some research on it, and he had quite a bit to say about it in the last episode that we had. Uno Mike, karibu sana. So, uh, maybe the the, 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 the the person you're thinking about was that kid who was molesting Kid, the, the, that story, but but, so, but so, I know, so but that I know was, what you're saying. That was an American who committed a crime in Kenya, right? 
So he was supposed to be tried in Kenya. Yes. Because you know like as an American when you commit a crime in Kenya, yeah. you're supposed this extradition is for now an American who committed a crime in Kenya and escaped and came to America. Mm. But this guy was he committed a crime in Kenya, the guy who molested children at some children's home. Yeah. He committed the crime in Kenya. Yes. He was arrested. Uh, but for some reason, there were some negotiations that were done, uh, and the U.S., um, you know, like the U.S. Uh, authorities picked him up and brought him to the U.S. for trial. And I think he's currently serving a 40-year sentence. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So the extradition uh, 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 treaty with Kenya was signed in December 22, mm -hmm. 1931. Where? Only Omosh was born. Born? In this group. Ijaba was uko kerea. Ame was a teenager. He was a teenager uko okay. fishing. So, and it was entered into force uh, like June, June 24th, like 1935. Okay. So by then he was a clerical officer. <laughs> so, uh, so the treaty covers a wide range of extra ditable offenses, including murder, manslaughter, kidnapping, counterfeiting, fraud, and drug trafficking. And I think if I'm not wrong, it's up for renewal. So but that have to confirm. Oh, so, so so it had a sunset clause. So there was so what I was reading up on was that it they, they it needs they need to they need to modernize it to modernize it. Yeah. So, but this is a treaty that was of a uh, wakoloni. Yes. Yes. And, and, and it's and, still there. But you see the interesting thing: a lot of laws that we have in the books today, correct, are including the penal code, are colonial laws. Most okay. of these stayed in the book, you know, and that's why I keep telling people. Uh, the British got a very soft exit from Kenya. A, very, a, a sweetheart deal. They got a sweetheart deal. They were even given like I think ten years. That's why when you look at pictures of schools that were that 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 that, that were white, like uh, party and changes. If you look at the pictures up to the early seventies, you still see white kids, and those were kids of the people who are now being given a chance to to wrap up, you know, like and. Uh, and hand over to to the Africans. That period was called Africanization. So they got a very sweet deal. But anyway, Uno Mike, back to you. So, um, so to extra, extradite a person from Kenya, uh, what the United States need to do needs to do is uh, must uh, first submit a formal extradition request to the Kenyan government. The request must include information about the crime that the person is accused of committing, as well as evidence to support the allegations. Okay. So if the Kenyan government approves the extradition request, the person will be arrested mm -hmm. and brought before a Kenyan court. The court will hold a hearing. This goes okay. back to what Omosh was saying. To determine whether the person is extraditable, is it extraditable, under yeah. the treaty. If the court finds that the person is extraditable or ditable, the person will be handed over to the U.S. U.S. authorities. Yes. Okay. Na uh, uyo amenda. Imenda. Yeah. Once uh, they say my brother or my sister, I we enda, we we enda. Okay. Let, 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 let's hear from Mika on what he thinks about this whole situation. How someone was in custody, you know, at Mudega Police Station, Yuko Maraha Yuko, he just disappeared into thin air. Mika. Yeah. Party, pe party people. Ah, niya jaga Aya. Salimia watu and tell us what you think about this. Uh, this interesting but, uh, case here. Hold up, let, let, let me confirm. One Mike, you know, Mosh is the one who used to introduce himself as uh, party people. Where are you now? One Mike. One Mike is is. You born a young guy, so you're party people. Yeah. Anyway, mm. uh, I want to say good evening to our on on your listeners of our remote community. Wapenzi wachangiaji. And uh, just to uh, jump onto this, uh, I hope everybody's having a good Friday. To jump onto this situation, this story right here. Uh, for me, my thoughts of this story are simple. Uh, once somebody becomes a fugitive, like they decide, you've shown that you're a runner, and this is the second time he's running, so he's basically he's a runner. And runners, there's usually that provision is, and uh, he's he's running because he committed murder, and uh, so he's considered to be armed and dangerous. Me, I'm one of those people who prefer to just make this short story short. Is when they see him, he should 
you'll get in touch with a few bullets and hey, we'll be sorry once and yeah, for all. Simple more. as that. Yeah, that, that, that's my thought process on people like this because how can you be so heartless to murder somebody, leave them in the trunk of a car, jump on, a, on an airplane, go to another country, in that other country, hide yourself, and then you know you did this. You go to party and continue living your life. You get arrested. Then you go and bribe your way out of a police station because there is no way. If you've ever been arrested in Kenya, you remove a belt and a shoe, right? And if somebody wants to talk to you, you'd never go anywhere. You talk right there next to them on the OB, on that side. You're in that side of the counter. You, the, whoever you're talking to is on this side of the counter, and you just move to the corner and you talk over there. Mika's experience. So how they say that he walked out? Maybe yeah, he, I have experience. Maybe he was Mika definitely has Maybe he was the Toki. Yeah. Ah, Nairobi, 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 come on, Nairobi, 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 So, so the thing is, there is no way. What I'm trying to say, there is no police station in this world whereby you'll be allowed that you to come to discuss with your lawyer and you step out. So this guy with his one shoe was allowed to go talk. To to the lawyer the compound of the police station so he can just walk out and get on number three no it doesn't happen somebody was bribed is the basic structure and which is not